Good morning. Welcome to beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. For the next couple of weeks, we're going to take a journey with one of God's prophets and see the way God deals with someone when his will and their will don't see eye to eye. Everything you should need to worship with us, you'll find either in your worship folders or on the screens behind me. And now, if everything is ready, come let us worship the Lord. Please stand. We worship in the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We now read responsively from Psalm 5. Listen to my words, Lord. Consider my lament. Hear my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait expectantly. For you are not a God who is pleased with wickedness. With you, evil people are not welcome. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful you, Lord, detest. But I, by your great love, can come into your house. In reverence I bow down toward your holy temple. Please be seated. We now prepare our hearts through confession. Friends, our high priest, Jesus Christ, knows all our weaknesses and can sympathize because he was tested in every way we are only without sinning. So let's come boldly to the throne of grace where we can find mercy and grace to help when we need it most. We confess together. Almighty God, Merciful Father, I, a troubled and repentant sinner, confess that I have sinned against you in my thoughts, my words, and my actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I am distressed by the sins that trouble me and am deeply sorry for them. 
Be merciful to me. Listen to my cry for mercy. And in your faithfulness, come to my relief. Jesus invites and comforts us with these words. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. By his perfect life and innocent death, he has forgiven all our sins and removed our guilt forever. He grants us rest in his mercy and forgiveness. In him we find strength to live according to God's will. Amen. God comes to us this morning, first through his word and later through his supper. Our first reading is recorded in Jonah chapter 1. This will also serve as the basis for our meditation this morning. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God. And they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, Tell us, who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? He answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them, and they asked, What have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them so. The sea was getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, What should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man, for you, Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. This is the word of the Lord.
Our gospel lesson this morning is recorded in Luke chapter 18. Here we see the reaction of a man to Jesus' call for him to leave behind his possessions and follow him. We also have a great promise from Jesus that no matter what we have done, that when we follow him, we will have everything we need, not only in this life, but a promise of eternal life forever with him in heaven to come. Out of respect for Jesus and his word and work among us, please stand. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. Jesus looked at him and said how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus replied, What is impossible with man is possible with God. Peter said to him, We have left all we had to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus said to them, No one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. At this time, we invite all the children who are present to come forward for the children's talk this morning. And if we could have everybody gather on this side to this morning. for you. Do you like to do everything that your mom and dad tells you to do? Yeah. You do? You are the perfect child. That is awesome. I have a hunch though that maybe most of the time we don't want to do what mom and dad want us to do. Sometimes they <coughs> ask us to do stuff to stay healthy like brush our teeth, but we might want to stay up a little bit longer and eat a little bit more popcorn and candy, so we kind of run the other direction. Give them a hard time. Sometimes they tell us not to play on certain toys until we get a little bit older, like the monkey bars, to keep us safe. But we really want to do that too, so we might try. And then sometimes they ask us to help them out by doing dishes and helping them and also teaching us how to do them. But do we always like to do our chores? No, I didn't think so. I didn't think so. So we might go the other way because we want to play instead. So God our Father does the same thing to us. God tells us to love him first, to make our faith strong and healthy. God tells us to show love to mom and dad, to not hurt others, to keep us safe. And God asks us to help him to tell other people about Jesus and how he takes away our sin. But just like our moms and dads, sometimes we don't want to do everything that God wants us to do. So we might run the other way. Today, listen to Pastor, because he's going to tell us a story about Jonah. What happened to Jonah? Yes. He went the other direction. He went the other direction, and what happened to him? He got, he, got he got swallowed by the fish. You're right, so we know that story. Jonah said no to God, like we sometimes say no to him, and he ran the other way. But God was always still with him. So God followed Jonah and had a fish swallow him. But God saved Jonah, too. And just like Jonah, God loves us and forgives us when we sometimes say no. And he always asks us to come to him for our forgiveness and his love. Can you guys hold your hands, please? Dear Father, please help me know and do your will. 
Fill me with joy for you and your wants. And please forgive me when I run the other way. Thank you for always being with me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right, guys, I'll meet you in the back. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Words for our consideration. Again, words recorded in Jonah chapter 1. Permit me to reread the first several verses. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. I would imagine we won't or wouldn't have to look very long or hard to find examples of competing wills. We'll find them amongst groups of individuals and sometimes even within a single individual. It may be the case of the will of mom or dad to eat something healthy versus your child's will to eat something that tastes good. You might find it among children who are trying to come to a conclusion on what movie they're going to watch or what to name the newest pet. If you're a married person, you're probably familiar with a clash of wills at times. It was something that happened to Christian apologist Vince Vitale and his wife Jo They were on vacation in Florence, and they had it on their trip itinerary to visit Michelangelo's statue of King David. And when they got there, they realized the queue was about two hours long. So they started a discussion, and Vince said, Honey, I know this is a place that you and I both said we we wanted to visit, but I think there's something better that we could do rather than stand in line for two hours, and it looks like it's going to rain. So the discussion continued, and they finally came to a compromise. Two hours later, they're now standing in front of the statue of David. And they both have a smirk on their face, and I'm guessing they both know why. When it comes to a clash of wills in the Vital household, Vince prefers to stay happily married. Now I hear some of you chuckling because we can probably associate with an example like that. But there is something true about a clash of will in that example, isn't there? That someone isn't going to get their way. Sometimes it might be over something silly. But what happens when there's a clash of wills over something serious? Over something spiritual? What happens when God's will for our lives does not match up with what we feel our lives 
where our lives should be heading or what we should be doing. What happens then? In Jonah chapter 1, we have one of the most pointed examples of how a child of God can and does react at times when God's will collides with theirs. And make no mistake, if it can happen to one of God's prophets, it can and does happen to God's children today. Jonah doesn't give us a whole lot of background before we jump right in in chapter 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. Let me help fill in some of the details of what's going on here. This wasn't like God asking a pastor here in Green Bay to weigh out whether he should continue serving in Green Bay or to take a call to Slab City, Wisconsin. This is far more serious. This would be like God telling a stateside pastor, time to pack up your bags and head overseas because you've got an appointment with the leaders of ISIS. And your message is to tell them 40 days to repent of all their acts of terror and to get their act together or else they're going to be wiped off the face of the earth. Or else being told, time to get ready, you're heading to North Korea and your mission is to tell Kim Jong-un that it's time to disarm all of his missiles and get straight or else North Korea will cease to exist. Does that help put things in a little different perspective? After all, we're told that Nineveh's wickedness had come up before the Lord. Jonah knew all about that. They were a savage people. They thought it would be fun to torture the people that they captured and that they ruled. And Jonah also knew his Old Testament prophecies really well. He knew that God had threatened his people, that if they continued in stubborn rebellion, that he would send the Assyrians, of which Nineveh is a part, to come down upon his people in punishment. When you add all the details together, what kinds of thoughts do you think were running through Jonah's mind? Yippee! I doubt it, right? I'm sure he was thinking things like, hey, Micah, he's a much better missionary than I am. God, you've got to be crazy, right? They eat people like me for dinner. What do you think is going to be the reaction when you send me over there with this kind of a message? What possible outcome do you think one person like me is going to have in such a great nation? As far as I see it, God, you're just sending me to my grave. Oh, and one last thing, God. I can't even fathom how you would consider showing mercy to a nation that cares nothing about you or nothing about anybody else. So Jonah ran from the Lord. In fact, we're told he ran from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. Look at all the specific details and how Jonah reacted. First it says he ran. Then it says he went south to Joppa where he was going to get on a ship headed for Tarshish, which you can see on the map is roughly 2,500 miles in the opposite direction. Not only that, he paid money to get on that boat to try to run away from the Lord. And at the end it says not only was he running, now he's fleeing from the Lord. Jonah made it pretty clear what he thought about God's will for his life, right? It's as if he's saying, God, I know what you want me to do, but I don't want any part of that. In fact, I'm headed in the opposite direction. I'm getting as far away from this situation as I possibly can. That is, of course, one way that a child of God can react to God's will. And while I'd love to say that it's 
a response and reaction that's unique to Jonah, I know that for me personally, I'd be lying. See, that's not a reaction that's unique to Jonah. While it may not happen in the exact same way, it's a reaction that plagues God's people still today. Think for a moment about the types of thoughts that run through your mind when God's will for your life now asks you to step outside your comfort zone where you're going to have to rely on God in faith. What's your reaction when God asks you to become vulnerable or step into a situation that's a little scary? Do the same thoughts start running through your mind? God, you've got to be crazy to think that I'm the right person to do this. I can think of a whole bunch of other people that are far more qualified to do what you need done than me. God, I see what you want for my life. But I think I know better in this case. And I'm headed in the opposite direction. And in those cases, what's happened? We are on the run. We're on the run from God, not to God. Have you ever thought about where the root of those types of thoughts come from anyways? Are they not stemming from a lack of faith and confidence in God's wisdom that where he calls and wills us to go and is leading us, that he will also provide, protect, and give us the resources we need? Is it not from a lack of faith and confidence in God's power to carry out his will in us and through us. See, running from God is easy because that's the natural reaction of the sinful nature. When God's will collides with what our sinful impulses are, it's easy to say, God, I'm out of here. See you later. Because that's how our sinful nature always reacts to God's word and God's will. But when we're running from God, we are taking away opportunities for God's love and God's power to be seen and displayed in our lives. We're taking away opportunities for God's goodness and God's blessings to be shown in the lives of others through us. Not to mention that when we run from God, we're now putting more distance between us and the only one who can truly help us. Jonah thought that he knew better he thought that he could run from God. So he got on that ship, and they started to set sail. But then God came with the storm. That storm was so bad that it threatened to sink the ship and take the lives of all the sailors. So finally, Jonah confessed, and now he's at the point where he's ready to be tossed overboard to an almost certain death. But God wasn't ready to let Jonah die just yet because he had greater plans for his ministry, for one man, for a ship full of sailors, for an entire nation, yes, for an entire world. And so we're told that God provided a great fish who swallowed up Jonah and he lived in the belly of that fish for three days and three nights. How does God deal with wayward rebels? Well, he could have, and we could argue should have, just let Jonah go. But he didn't. 
because that's not who God is. And that's not how God operates. When God's rebellious children run, God in love comes after them. Because he loves them with an everlasting, with an endless love. If you've ever had a Jonah moment, if you're in the midst of a Jonah moment right now, then stop and point your eyes to the cross. Stop running from God and in faith run to him. And see how God deals with runaway rebels. See how in love he pursues them. How in love he will go to extraordinary measures to save his people. So extraordinary that he would send his one and only son who would give his life on a cross And in giving up his life, he would save ours. You see, it's at the cross where God forgives. It's at the cross where God restores and God recommissions. It's at the cross where God fills with joy and strength. Joy to do his will. Even when it comes to stepping outside our comfort zone. Next week, we will have the opportunity to see what God did through Jonah after he miraculously saved him. May we bow our heads. Lord God, it can happen so quickly that your will for our lives comes into conflict with our sinful impulses. Lord, forgive us for the times we have strayed from you and your will. In your mercy, restore us and fill us with confidence in your grace and power in knowing that where you call us to go, you will strengthen and equip us to carry out your will to your glory and for the good of others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please stand. We now continue with our thankful response for God speaking to us. We use the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We now continue with our thanks to God in the form of our financial offerings.
God is willing. These times God is willing. These times God is willing to carry you through. These times I will trust Him. These times I will trust him, these times I will trust him, he'll carry me through. Well, this, these times God is able, these times God is able, these times God is able to carry times God is willing to carry you through. These times I will trust Him. These times I will trust Him. These times I will trust Him. He'll carry me God is able. Yes, these times God is able. These times God is able to carry you through. These times God is willing. These times God is willing. These times God is willing to carry God is able. These times God is able. These times God is able to carry you through. These times God is able to carry Please stand for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people throughout the world, to strengthen believers and to enlighten unbelievers, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For peace and justice among nations, for honest leaders and good neighbors, for the gift of love, for steadfast faith and patient endurance, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer pain or sorrow, for the lonely and depressed, for the poor and needy, for those who love us and those who hate us, we pray. Lord, have mercy. Be gracious to us, defend us by your power, and bring us to glory everlasting. To you, O oh Lord, we entrust ourselves. Hear us now as we join in the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now prepare our hearts to celebrate God's Supper. Do you believe that you are a sinner? Yes, I believe that I am a sinner, and I deserve God's wrath 
punishment and eternal condemnation. Are you sorry for your sins? Yes, I am sorry that I have sinned against God and turn in repentance and faith to his holy supper for forgiveness at his invitation. Do you believe then that the true body and blood of Christ are in the sacrament? Yes, I believe it. Why does Christ want you to remember and proclaim his death when you partake of his holy supper? He wants me to do this so that I learn to look with terror upon my sins and regard them as great indeed. He also desires that I learn to believe that no creature could make satisfaction for my sins, but only Christ, as true God and true man, did do that. Finally, he desires that I find joy and comfort in Christ alone and believe that I have salvation through faith in him. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Please be seated. There are gluten-free wafers and alcohol-free wine should your dietary needs require them. At the direction of the ushers, please come forward for all things are now ready.
Please stand. We now prepare to leave in the joy and strength of the Lord. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with malice. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues they tell lies. Declare them guilty, O God. Let their intrigue be their downfall. Banish them for their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favors as with a shield. Receive now with believing hearts the Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, a good morning to you all, and a special good morning and welcome to those who are with us as guests. We invite and encourage you to come back and worship with us again at your earliest convenience. I don't have any specific announcements this morning other than to wish you God's richest blessings on the rest of your day and the week ahead.